Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Well, I guess the weather uh, had different plans than I did today because it has been pouring rain, um, crazy windy and cold all day. So I decided that I wasn't gonna be out there trying to pull up grass in that. Um, so I'll leave that project that I was working on uh, for, for another day. Hopefully tomorrow or Monday, I'll be able to get back at it. We'll see how wet things are out there. There was a bit of a river running through the yard earlier today but yeah, that's just that's gardening so so i thought since the weather squashed my plans for for being out there i'd get on with planting some of this squash and pumpkins and gourds and things that i was supposed to plant a few weeks ago i was going to get some of these ready at least a week ago um and i haven't gotten any of it planted yet so um I just wanted to plant them just a little bit early before they can go out. My average last frost is in about a week and a half. Uh, the way the weather's going, these probably won't be out. I probably won't be able to put these out for probably two weeks or so. Um, but I just want to get them started inside. Uh, so what I'm going to use are these bags. Um, I purchased these a few years ago. They are called the non-woven nursery bags. Now, I have to say, I don't really care for them. The advertising for them, I got them on Amazon. The advertising said that they would break down and um, d like into the soil. And if they do break down, they're just breaking down into a lunch, bunch of little pieces of like microplastics or something. I don't know, it kind of feels like a, a dryer sheet if, you, if you're familiar with that, if you've ever used it, like a dryer sheet for a static cling in your dryer that's what they kind of feel like to me um, and they're supposed to let the roots grow through them and they do to some extent but I've used them for peppers in the past and they didn't do a great job of letting the the, the roots through um, so I, I actually sliced them before I planted the peppers that year and uh, I haven't used them since but I still have like lots left and I thought maybe they'd work better for like squash and that. I think they'll have a, a good strong root system. And um, I just need to use these up anyways. I'll probably just wind up pulling them out of the ground when I'm like at the end of the season and throwing them away because they don't break down. They're certainly not like a biodegradable anything. I mean, they've been sitting in my shed for two years and they're just like brand new still. So, so I'm just gonna fill these up. I'll probably put three seeds of each variety in in each one and then I'll trim it down to one plant. Uh, some things I'll only grow like one plant of. Uh, I don't know what, but like probably a lot of, I have lots of like pumpkins that are good for like carving and eating and things, but most of them I'll just use for like carving and decorations. So I'll probably only do maybe one or two plants of each of these in the end. So that would be like, one or two of these but I'll put like two to three seeds in each of these just to make sure one goes and then I'll cut it back um, I'm not going to show you how to plant the the seeds it's not complicated you put soil in you put a seed in you put like half an inch of soil on top and you keep it moist and warm they need to be in my climate here I'm in Saskatchewan Canada they'll need to stay inside here you can see I have a big shelf behind me full of grow lights and plants, my peppers, my tomatoes, all sorts of things. It's a disaster in here. I've been up potting things all day. Um, but they'll need to stay in here where it's warm just to get going. And then I'll be able to move them outside once all risk of frost is done. And I'll wait till it's like staying, you know, I'd say at least above five Celsius at night. Um, or, and even then, I don't know, I'll probably put some sort of protection around them and harden them off really well before they go out. But um, I'll show you what I'm gonna be planting. There's a chance they won't all get into the garden, but I do have spots penciled in for all of them. But um, I have the Baby Jack mix. This is just a fun little mix of little kind of miniature pumpkins. There's like white pumpkins or orange, some are stripey, and they're just, they're just a, a fun little mix that are fun to put into decorations. I've tried to, cook them just to see what they taste like. I would not recommend eating those. <laughs> they weren't that tasty. Um, then I have cougar. Again, this one is mostly just like, I'll use it for like carving or just decorations in the fall. This is new rocket. 
again, just a good decoration one. Uh, this is Casper. These, I believe, are all edible. I don't know about the Casper. Um, I'm not a big fan. Like, I like pumpkin for, like, desserts and things, but I don't make, like, pumpkin soups and things like some people do, so I don't use a lot for eating. Um, let's see if I have other pumpkins here. This is a Rouge Vie de Ton. Um, I believe this was a red, I'm trying to read, I have like pencil on here. Oh yeah, this one I ordered because it's that like kind of classic Cinderella stagecoach pumpkin kind of look to it. So it's just something a little bit different from your like classic orange kind of oblongy pumpkins. This one's supposed to be a little bit more squat. Uh, I want to say it's supposed to have a deeper color too, but I can't remember. This is a long season. Some of these are going to be really pushing it in my season, but I like to try them anyways. Uh, the write-up on these also said it was good for pies and uh, cooking, so if you're into that. Uh, Renegade, I think again, it's just a real generally uniformly shaped pumpkin that's good for, you know, decorating with. So then I have the Autumn Frost Squash. I should have looked these up so I could remember what they were. Um, uh, okay, this says, I've written notes on here. It says it's tawn in color and blocky um, kind of pumpkin. I think I saw this on another YouTube channel and they said it was really good. They really enjoyed eating it. It's This one will be for eating. Did I say it was? It's a squash. It's a summer, summer frost squash and um, it's good for decorating with, but it also stores like up to four months. So it's a pretty decent storage squash um, and it's supposed to be quite yummy and I do like to eat like a lot of the squashes I don't know pumpkins don't have the same depth of flavor to me um, they just don't appeal to me in the same way as a lot of the squashes do East Elite squash I know I grew two different squashes East Elite I believe dark green oh butter oh this is the buttercup okay so yeah, I had these, I grew these and the Celebration last year. I really liked them both. The Celebration is more of like kind of an ac acorn type squash and this is more of a butter type, buttercup type squash. Both really delicious squash and they both stored pretty well for me. I think they stored, um, I think I ran out of them before they, they weren't, um, they weren't, you know, before they were going bad on me. I want to say it was, uh, into the new year that I still had some that I was using. Uh, sweet meat. So this, um, I have just little notes written on in pencil because this uh, company only puts like very generalized information on the backs. Uh, but this says that it was supposed to be really good for storage and um, like a real nutty kind of flavor to it. Uh, and 10 pound. So that's a decent sized squash. So it'll be interesting to see how these turn out. They are like 100 days or something. Yeah, 100 days. And I have 110 frost-free growing days, so a little iffy on that one, whether I'll get any fruit off of it or not. Um, but I like, I like a challenge. I like to try. And then just for fun, I'm going to try the Wild Bunch squash again this year. This is just a mixture of kind of, they say it's like the craziest, wonkiest looking shapes and, and coloring and that of squash that they have here from Bessie Seeds. They've just put them all together. Uh, these did not grow well for me last year. I think where I put them, they were getting too much wind and maybe not enough water. They were kind of out of sight, out of mind. And I think uh, that did them in. So I'll try and get them into a better location this year. And uh, this gourd small professional mix, just fun little gourds that you could dry for decoration. Um, I've never grown these, so I might try a few of these. I actually have a property that I take care of for a business, and there's some flower beds on the side, and I think that's actually where these would go. I think they might be kind of neat just growing along the ground. There's a lot of foot traffic there, and it kind of, the flower bed is kind of raised up from the foot traffic on the one side, so I think that could be kind of fun at eye level if they're kind of spilling down over the wall towards people, or I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if I can wind up planting them. And a few might get in my yard, but I'm really tight on space and I'm not sure this is going to make it here, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to try somewhere. So see where I can sneak it in. But 
anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm out of big 10 by 20 trays to set my plants in. So I'm going to just use these meat trays and kind of line these up and see how many of these I can get going in here. Uh, but squash don't need a lot to get going. Like you just, like I said, you're just going to throw some, some soil in the, the bag or the, the container that you're growing them in. I would recommend something um, that's easy to take them out of without disturbing the roots too much or like a peat pot or something that you can keep them in. I find here a peat pot, um, I even will still have to um, cut the sides or rip it open. They just, I don't, I don't find they break down and the roots don't come out of them that well either. So I just, um, I think this will be just as fine as the peat pot. The peat pot's still there at the end of the year for me too. They do eventually break down on like these little bags, but I have these bags, I'm gonna use them up. So I've just filled it up. And I think I'll just write on the container. I'll just put on the, the container whoop, here what, what I'm putting in these. Um, so, yeah, this will be a mixture, so who knows what kind of gourd I'll wind up with. Um, I'll put two seeds in, just drop them down, and I'll maybe do one more container of that, so the rest of these seeds away. And, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll just be doing the same thing with all of these, and uh, I think I'll just write on the side of the container here, put two bags beside each other, and that'll be how I label them. And yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing on this rainy day is up potting plants that are waiting to be up potted and uh, planting squash and gourds and pumpkins. So I hope that uh, you all are having better weather than me. The rain's great. I mean, we need the moisture. My rain barrels are overflowing. I wish I had more. Uh, but it is slowing down some projects I had planned outside, but I'll get to them. And uh, I don't want to turn down the ranks. I know this later this summer, I'll probably be whining that we don't have any rain. So, and we've had some dry years, we could use it. So again, there's that there's a couple of seeds. Oops. And I'll just set them side each other in the tray like this like I said so I should probably be able to get two maybe three in each of these like rows so like six six containers in each of these rows probably and I'll just write down on the side uh, with a like a chalk marker what's in these bags and then I'll know because I'm kind of running out of labels it's getting to that time of year where supplies are, are dwindling and um, it's time to just get things outside <laughs> But um, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.